Hi guys, in this video we'll take a look at the modulus function, the modulus of a linear function, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what exactly is the modulus function? Many quantities can take positive and negative values. Take for example a velocity time graph, something that might look like the following. As you can see, the velocity takes both positive and negative values for different values of time. But we also tend to talk about the absolute value of a quantity. The absolute value just takes the positive version of whatever quantity you have. If it's already positive, it keeps it the same, and if it's negative, it turns it into the positive version. Let's say we had this same velocity time graph. We can instead look at the speed and that would look like the following. In this case, the speed is the absolute value of the velocity. When we do this to a function, we call it taking the modulus of that function. Let's say the function looked like this. Then its modulus would look like the following. We need to develop a solid method for sketching and manipulating modulus functions. So how can we deal with the modulus of a linear function? Firstly, we have notation for representing the modulus of a function. We write the modulus of f of x as the straight bars around the f of x. The modulus of a function also has an algebraic definition. The modulus of f of x is the same as this following piecewise graph. We have that it takes the value of f of x if f of x is positive or equal to zero, or it takes the value minus f of x if f of x is negative. Notice that this definition always ensures that the modulus is positive. If f of x is negative, it takes the negative of that negative and therefore is positive. Now some functions are positive everywhere and are hence unaffected by the modulus function. Take for example the following quadratic. Notably the quadratic y equals x squared minus 2x plus 5. It has a y-intercept at 5 and a turning point at 1, 4. Because this function is positive everywhere, if we took the modulus, the graph would look the same. So in this case, the modulus of x squared minus 2x plus 5 is precisely the same as x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now let's consider the modulus of the most basic linear function. If we take the modulus of x itself, by definition, that's the same as x if x is greater than or equal to 0, or minus x if x is less than 0. If we sketch the graph of y equals x, we get the following relationship. However, the modulus makes this positive, and therefore the graph of the modulus of x looks like the following. It entirely overlaps with this positive part here, but over here, where the graph is negative, it actually reflects in the x-axis. So this orange line is the graph of y equals mod x. We say mod as short for modulus. All other moduli, i.e. the plural of modulus, of linear functions, are graph transformations of the modulus of x, i.e. they will have the same shape. Let's say we had the following graph. This would be the graph of y equals the modulus of 2x minus 1. Notice that it has precisely the same shape as the original graph of y equals modulus of x. It has an x-intercept at 1 half and a y-intercept at 1. To graph these functions in general, we start by graphing the original function. So in this case, we're looking at the graph of y equals 2x minus 1. Of course, for this graph, we have an x-intercept at 1 half and a y-intercept at minus 1. We can determine the new y-intercept by examining our graph or by looking at the modulus function. Here again, we have the graph of y equals 2x minus 1. We can determine the new y-intercept using this graph by taking the y-intercept at minus 1 currently and reflecting it up in the positive direction up to 1. That would be the new y-intercept. Alternatively, we can just look straight at the modulus function. 
We're looking at the point when x equals 0. That is the definition of the y-intercept. Now, recall that we're looking to have the graph y equals modulus of 2x minus 1. Therefore, when x is 0, this disappears, and so we have the modulus of minus 1. Again, the modulus takes the positive value, and therefore, this is just 1. In this process, we will have identified the x-intercept. This corresponds precisely to the x-intercept of the modulus function. Again, here we have the graph of y equals 2x minus 1. The x-intercept of the modulus function happens precisely at this half here. The x-intercept of the original function corresponds precisely to the x-intercept of the modulus function. Now we have enough information to accurately reflect the curve and sketch the modulus function. Again, as before, the positive branch stays there. However, the previously negative branch gets reflected. We know the intercept based on our earlier discussion. The x-intercept is 1 half and the y-intercept is 1. This is how we will sketch linear modulus functions. Our first example asks us to sketch the curve y equals modulus of minus 2x. Our first step is to sketch the original function. If we ignore the modulus signs, the graph of y equals minus 2x looks like this. The second step is to determine the new intercepts. We can find the y-intercept by looking at the modulus function y equals the modulus of minus 2 lots of 0. And this, of course, is the modulus of 0, which is 0. The x-intercept, this corresponds to precisely where the previous graph of the original function intercepts the x-axis, and this occurs when x is 0. Our third step is to sketch the new function, i.e. the modulus function. In this case, it's quite easy. The positive branch on the left-hand side of 0 stays the same, and the negative version gets reflected. So now this is the graph of y equals the modulus of minus 2x, and this is the final answer. Our second example asks us to sketch the curve y equals the modulus of 3x plus 2. Our first step is to sketch the original function. The graph of y equals 3x plus 2 looks like the following. The x-intercept is at minus 2 thirds, and the y-intercept is at 2. Our second step is to determine the new intercepts. The y-intercept is just the following. It will be the modulus of 3 lots of 0 plus 2, just taking the modulus of the function we were considering. This, of course, is the modulus of 2, and because 2 is already positive, this is just 2, still. The x-intercept corresponds to precisely the x-intercept of the original function, and by looking at the graph, we can see that that happens at x equals minus 2 thirds. Our last step is to sketch the new function. By looking at our previous sketch, we can see that the positive part will stay precisely where it is. This occurs from here onwards. However, the negative part gets reflected in the x-axis. Now all that remains is to label the intercepts. But we've just found them previously. So the x-intercept is minus 2 thirds, and the y-intercept is 2. This is the graph of y equals the modulus of 3x plus 2. Our last example asks us to sketch the curve of y equals the modulus of 4 minus 5x. Our first step is to sketch the original function. In this case, the graph of y equals 4 minus 4x looks like this. The y-intercept is at 4, and the x-intercept is at 5 over 4. This again is the graph of y equals 4 minus 5x. The second step is to determine the new intercepts. The y-intercept occurs by taking the modulus when x is 0. This corresponds to y equals the modulus of 4 minus 5 lots of 0. This is the modulus of 4, and since 4 is positive, this is still 4. The x-intercept, again, this corresponds to the same x-intercepts of the original function. And this occurs when x equals 5 over 4, just by looking at the diagram above. Our last step is to sketch the new function. As we had previously, the positive part is on the left of 5 over 4, and that stays where it is. However, the negative part is reflected in the x-axis. Now what we need to do is label the intercepts. The x-intercept occurs at 5 over 4, and the y-intercept occurs at 4. 
This is the graph of y equals the modulus of 4 minus 5x. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy by smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.